Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, man. Uh, welcome back to Reflection Thursdays. Uh, I know it's been a minute, you guys, that uh, you've heard from us. Uh, a lot of transitions, a lot of things have happened uh, in the course of about three weeks. And just the summertime, me being really busy, um, of course, you guys know when it came to the karaoke business, I had to make some adjustments. Uh, I'm no longer out west. I can now freely say that I'm no longer out west, uh, but we do have something that we have going on on Wednesday now uh, that if I had the hand claps, I would be able to give you guys some hand claps or sound effects or something like that. But um, one of the good things that me and Tavon are doing on Wednesdays uh, mm -hmm. is a little bit different than the normal karaoke show that we put on. Uh, what we decided to do for Wednesdays as we were brainstorming is just basically we said, man, what can we do to really uh, showcase the community or uh, what people are doing in the community? So we didn't really want to focus on, uh, you know, people as a whole, but we wanted to focus on women, considering we're playing off Women Press Wednesdays. But just to put a different spin on it, instead of having your favorite bottle girl and your favorite Instagram model, we really wanted to highlight professional women doing uh, some great things in the community. So whether you're a hairdresser, or you're a politician, um, your mother, whatever the situation is, you get a chance to have a second birthday each and every single Wednesday. And so the thing has really been building some momentum and growing some legs. So we just really ask that you guys support that because it's not just a club night. It, it really is a, a, an empowerment movement. So other than that, that's what I got going on, Tim. What's going on with you, bro? Woo! Everything. Like you said, the summer has been busy um still dropping books i've been back doing poetry events uh, i've been doing book shows just went to see eric badu last weekend just traveling oh, shit, did you? yeah detroit yeah just traveling and trying to get back to myself in certain aspects of my life you know what i mean i think as we grow and as we learn more things there's a plethora of new stuff we can apply, but I think there's a lot of things that we used to do that we can become better at, you know, if we put our focus and our intention back into it. So for me, this time has really, really been reflecting, you know, reflecting on the last three years, asking myself, do I like the outcome? You know what I mean? Do I like how I feel? Do I like the people around me? And I can truly say, like, that part of my life is elevated. It's a lot better than it's been in the past. You know, the business business is up and down. It's hard to measure success by what's happening right now. You know, you got to you gotta put everything together to measure that. So for me, business is kind of on the back burner right now. Like, my mental health has been priority one. You know, so I've been taking care of that. You know, taking myself to the movies taking myself on walks, disconnecting some days. You know what I mean? I can yeah. truly say at this part of my life, I'm not arguing with anybody over the phone. You know what I mean? Like, life is life is good, really. Sometimes you got to take that time for yourself. Uh, I like to apologize to my significant other in advance. The gas station I went to didn't have coffee, so I had to drink. I had to get this to wait. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know she's looking at my bottle like, really, Negro? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you going down that whole bottle of sugar, huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Early in the morning. Exactly, man. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about, you guys. Yeah. Get up in here. I want to say good morning to Adrian uh, Boulder. Now, uh, I apologize. Tim is going to read some of the comments as well because uh, I think my glasses, I did bring my glasses, but I think I left them in the car. Um, but one of the things that Tim always zeroes in in on is uh, we haven't been knowing each other that long, and, and this is for the audience. But Tim kind of zeroes in on what's going on with me, and he'll kind of formulate a topic around that because sometimes our synergy matches, and he might be going through either something similar, or he might have some great insight on uh, what I'm going through. So when he brought up the topic, falling off the uh, wagon or getting off to the saddle and getting back on. I said, man, perfect, because um, for those who don't know, I may or may not be able to bring the other two podcasts back, but uh, we were waiting on a significant grant. 
It just didn't get approved, so we just had to do some creative financing just to keep the business open and things of that nature. Um, but like I said, Tim's just zeroed in on that. So we just want to go over a few things that we've gone through in our life. Maybe it'll help you guys out as well. Kind of go over um, the things that attack you, how to get through these things, uh, the emotions that you'll go through when you're going through, when you have to detail. I don't like to call them setbacks. I like to call them detours Yeah, uh, yeah. because it's, it's really, you're going to get there. I mean, if I can encourage anybody right now, you're going to get there. It may not be the road that you thought you was going to take, but you're going to get there. But detours really can still depress people. And I think that's what we're here to talk about today. Yeah. And I think as you're pointing out, an important thing to remember, you know, for the people at home is the detours and the journey during the journey you take, that's a part of the journey. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of times we're waiting and expecting for the destination and the journey is literally about the journey it's about the people you see along the way the things you pick up the things you leave off along the way you know what i mean the things you learn and things you unlearn that's the point it's hard to do that when you're just sitting at home all day that's yeah. the point of going out to apply yourself because there's so many different lessons in different avenues of applying yourself Right. And that feeds into the duality of everything because it does suck when things don't go your way. It sucks when you get really? denied. It sucks when you got to start over. That stuff is hard. And we should acknowledge it's hard because then it shows us if we're where we are doing what we should want to do. You know what I mean? And things will happen that will question your total existence because I almost hate that that cliche, you know, man makes a plan and God laughs because Without a plan, you're planning to fail. So yeah. it's nothing more heartbreaking than planning for success. And as you said, it's like, it didn't go my way. And you're looking like, well, what the hell did I plan for? You know what I'm saying? But Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people's plan is one step, two steps. You know what <laughs> I mean? My plan is an infinite loop. Every single time I start something new, I come up with a plan. And then like one of my mentors taught me, Plan number two is plan for that shit not to work out. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, that's the second part. And then going back into the loop, I'm back at number one. I'm coming up with a new plan. And then I'm planning for that plan. Not to, and I'm constantly coming up with plans. And then I have to be able to see which one works. And a lot of times, that's where we get in our own way. We bring someone in to help us, but it's not our way. So we can't really get fully behind it. To mm. me, I'm loyal and I'm dedicated to the truth. So if your way is better than my way, we're going with your way. There's no debate about it. I don't second guess in my head, well, maybe we should have went with my way. You know what I mean? But there's another side of that, why I like doing so many things alone. Uh, 50 Cent touched on this. He yeah. said, I don't mind failing. I want to fail at my own expense. I don't want to fail at someone else's plan. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll, I'll fail at my plan. You know what I mean? And then I'll come up with another one. But I don't want to constantly take direction from everyone that I'm upset about where it leads me. You know what I'm saying? But 50, one thing I love about 50, you love him for the good or the bad. Yeah. He has self awareness. Yeah. But he can do and can do. A lot of people don't have a self awareness. So he knows his temper. He knows that I'd rather put it on me because if I put it on you, I'm going to go crazy on you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that self awareness really helps 50. Yeah. And it comes from security. You know what I mean? That type of security is what I have to practice in things I do outside of my arena. So if I was to go on a cooking show and I lose, I'm not going to care because I already knew losing was probably inevitable. If I won, it was probably a fluke. They do this every single day. I do this when I'm hungry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we got to start being honest in our own lives in arenas where we just came to be versus where we're coming to compete. I don't have the same energy towards what I'm doing if I'm not competing, if we're just doing it for fun. I'm not yelling at you and talking shit. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm having fun. But if this is something I really do, I'm not trying to prove it to the world I do it. I'm proving it to myself every single day that I do it. That's a part of the toll to what you're trying to do. You got to pay the admission. You can't just show up. Nothing's free. You can't just show up and start growing. You got to pay down. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes... The risk and reward could cost you your life. Yeah. And 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 no greater example 
Like people are really not really looking at the picture of the submarine tragedy or what it is, is that yeah. when we talk about the submarine tragedy, they had a plan. <laughs> it just didn't work. <laughs> Terrible plan. <laughs> but that, that 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 risk cost them their life. You know what I'm saying? But had they had won, yeah. they probably would have been on the other side of that books and and all kinds of interviews and everything like that. The upside would have been great, but for them. <laughs> I, mean, I think it would have been bad for the world because you would have had a lot more submarines taken off. <laughs> it would have been the worst thing that could have happened if that if it would have survived. Because it was a bad idea. The people told them it was a bad idea. Experts told them it was a bad idea. Their kids told them not to get on. See, that's the universe. The universe is going to give you signs. And how many times <laughs> do we get upset when we ignore the damn sign? The sign was all in your face saying, turn around, detour, no, stop. Now, let me ask you a question, Tim. Yeah. Didn't one of those guys make it down there? I mean, they said he made it down there a couple times. One of the one Bro, of the um James Cameron, the freaking director, the guy that made the Titanic. He's visited the Titanic site like 33 times in the past. So it he, was just the it's the vessel. It wasn't the trip. It was a poorly built vessel. They rushed it. Experts even that went to check on it said this is not good for what y'all trying to use it for. You know what I mean? It was a terrible plan. So that does debunk the myth that nobody has really never been down there. People oh, multiple people. Yeah, this ain't nothing new what they're doing with the Titanic. They just try to start um, benefiting from it. They try to start making money off of it. But people have been doing this for years, going to visit the Titanic. Wow. Yeah, multiple times. It was the vessel. It was the. It's the same when they were trying to take people casually into space. I, I, I'm staying away from that type of stuff. You know, to each his own. <laughs> Have fun. But don't, I, I don't want people also coming back looking for pity for me when something goes wrong. These are the reasons I don't bungee jump and skydive. Like, things go wrong with that many variables. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and I'm, I'm going to tell you guys a brief story for those at home. If you do want to share this, please uh, share this on your page. Again, thank you, Adrian, and anybody else on the check-in. But when you... Set out for a goal, especially a major one. Uh, read the Acres of Diamonds. Mm -hmm. And people think that it was a story about not giving up, right? But there's a little caveat in this story about the Acres of Diamonds. So basically, uh, one day a man was sold a piece of land and they said, this land has a, a Acres of Diamonds. Uh, so if you mine it correctly, you know, you're going to be a rich person. So the man buys the land. And he starts digging, you know, uh, year one, of course, he's digging and he still has a lot of hope. Uh, year two, he's, you know, still got hope, but he's getting a little discouraged by year three. He's just like, man, fuck this. You know what I'm saying? And he throws the pitchfork and he leaves. Now, the person who buys the land from him only digs one inch, well, I think one inch or one foot into where the place was dug, and bam, there goes the diamonds, right? The dude, he gave up one foot away from success. You know what I mean? But what they didn't realize, this is the caveat, and this is in Dennis Kimmerer's book, What Makes the Great Great. The guy that bought the land from him was an engineer. <laughs> mm. so, he was able to survey the land and have some insight, like, oh, shit, it's right there. You know what I'm saying? He was able to do his research. So a lot of times we have goals, but we don't have the intel or we don't have the proper knowledge on how to mine for these diamonds. So, yeah, we're always going to give up because basically that person could have just been picking here, there, and there and would have never found the diamonds. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Even when you, like, like Tim said earlier, he is a person who is going to listen to wisdom from other people. He's a loyal person and a student. So what he doesn't know, he's going to get that information. And a lot of people, we're just out here willy-nilly and just trying to get to this thing through osmosis or our own self-knowledge. And that probably is just not going to get it. How many, and I'm about to step on some toes here, there's a lot of 40-year-old rappers, and it's sad. Because they were good in their 20s. 
they were good in their 30s, but they just didn't know how to navigate through the times. And, and now that they're old and they still want to live this dream, and what the harsh reality is, they're never going to be big rap stars because they right. just, you know what I'm saying? Right, which is, to me, damn near every industry. It has a window to when you can get in. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the same with basketball. You go a year without hooping, they don't care about you no more. Like, you have a window to where you got to constantly be in the arena at a top level or kids turn 18 every day. Like, what do they need you for? You know what <laughs> I mean? They got fresh, young, cheap legs. They don't need somebody with experience. They want somebody who makes sense for them in the long run. So if you at the end to what you're doing, it's probably not a good fit. You know what I mean? And these analogies is why I love analogies because everything in life is connected. I'm glad you brought the submarine up because it, it – Situations like that constantly show me how full of shit people are. You know, someone to tell you they have a belief in another area and then something else happens to debunk their belief. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? I watched for a week that submarine thing be called a tragedy. A week, you know what I mean? Going into that next week is when that man was fighting the mom in Chicago and got killed by the son. Two different situations. But two similar lessons. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Like, you getting what you looking for. You dig what I'm saying? People had a whole different understanding of the black guy dying from the kid. Like, it was a joke. It was literally a routine social media joke. The submarine, oh, we couldn't joke about that. That's <laughs> not funny. People lost their lives. In the middle of those two weeks, 700 immigrants got lost on the ship. Was no reporting, wasn't on the news. People weren't talking about it. We're talking about these four motherfuckers in a submarine and laughing about the one black guy that got killed in the restaurant. Like, none of that to me fucking makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we're going to be sensitive to something, we should be sensitive to it every time, or we don't care. It's just fake outrage. You can't pick and choose when you feel a way about what's going on. Either you feel a way or you don't. Someone died. Is it funny or not? Well, it's funny when he does it. It's not funny. Like, nah, if it's funny, it's funny when everyone does it. You dig? And that's yeah. the world. That to me is living in your truth. That's why communication is so hard this day and age. Because a lot of us are saying the same shit just in different languages. So we assume the other person is saying something different. You dig what I'm saying? Like, not a submarine and the, this restaurant was fucking hilarious to me. Like, if you're willing to throw your life away over nothing, why, sh why should I care? Like, why should I be all upset when you didn't even give a shit? You went to the bottom of the ocean. And let me let me say more now. <laughs> the the uh, the era and the culture of self help books really fucked things up. Yes. Can we talk about that, please? Self help and 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 guess what? To my to my right is a self help person. Listen. So, so for him to agree with this, you got to hear this. Self help really fucked people up, and the reason why it did is because there are things that when you really should analyze, going back to what Tim said, um, if you're 300 pounds, you might not make the cover of Vogue. I don't care how many. Exactly. <laughs> and that's fair to me. <laughs> it's, their, it's their world. It's their game. They dictate the rules. You know, it's like people go to their job like, give me more vacation time. Why would they? They don't have to do that. This is their <laughs> fucking company. <laughs> Why would I have to listen to you? Who are you? Now Lizzo might make the cover of Vogue, but that's about it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And and Lizzo will make the cover of Vogue out of a novelty to sell the magazine. She won't make it because it's what their standard is or it's what their creed is. Lizzo will make it as a novelty, but the average plus size woman will not, and I'm telling you, will not make the cover of Vogue magazine. And it's just the reality. As Tim went back to say, um, if you didn't make it to the league by a certain age, if you didn't make it to the league by 30, it's over. It's it's a wrap for you. You know what I'm saying? And 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 then you have see, and the self-help has fucked people up. And the Cinderella story has fucked people up. Yeah. Because you gotta think of the story of Cinderella. Only one lucky lottery winner was able to win that. I'm pretty sure all the women in the village wish they had that glass slipper. But yeah. the sun does shine on the dog's ass every now and then. You know what I'm saying? And it may be you, it may not be you. 
we're not telling you to be hopeless or give up hope. We're just saying one of the things I love, you brought up 50 Cent. Mm -hmm. And one of his first chapters in the 50th law is you got to look at the world through some real eyes. Yeah. That's going to make you win. You have to look at the world through the most realistic aspect that you can. And when you look at it through that, then you can start making adjustments. But uh, it's not so much giving up your dream. I know a lot of high school stars that went to media. They may not be playing basketball, but they're reporting. You know what I'm saying? Or they become column writers. That's the one people used to write for real. Or they're yeah. or managers, trainers. Something that still has you in that field. Yeah. That you can still realize your dream. It's just that you're not on the floor, you know, shooting for three. You know what I mean? And that's most, and that to me, what you just explained, because everything you just explained is on point. The first part of it is as far as I see the duality, even in that, as far as the self help and the the motivational coaches and all that shit, and then the other side of the Cinderella the Cinderella story. To me, the self help is the external source. That's someone else putting that into you. Mm. The Cinderella story is on that person. That's on that individual. And the reason that story goes that way and people don't learn from it is mindset. You dig what I'm saying? Like, let's say they let's say they believed in couples goes. And they met Jay-Z and Beyonce. Most people ain't going to ask them, what do y'all do when times get hard to make y'all's relationship still function? They going to ask them, like, how do y'all make the money? How do y'all have fun? Like, dumb shit. Shit that has nothing to do with why their relationship's working. It's just a product of the fact that their relationship works for them. You dig what I'm saying? Every No one could replicate it. If they could, they would be doing it already. Right. But to me, it's the mindset when we go into things. If I'm going into something trying to learn, I'm asking questions to learn. I'm not asking how much we getting paid, how long we got to be here. You know what I mean? Like, that's your mindset is fucked. You're already not going to gain anything from this experience because of how you looking at it. But if you really want the answers, go find them. Go to these older couples and ask them what work. Go to these business owners and ask them what work. Go actually ask the tough questions because if not, you're only getting the end result. And Jay-Z says it all the time. People see where my life is and say, oh, I want that. But you don't want the hard work that comes with it. So you you don't want that. <laughs> you think you want right. that, but the, you don't want that. And the thing is, is that you can't take instruction literal all the time. You right. can't take knowledge and wisdom literal all the time. Like, I remember being condemned for so long for reading and indulging in the 48 Laws of Power. I mean, that was my Bible. The 48 Laws of Power was my Bible. And the thing was, was like, you know, certain people would see me reading, it was like, oh, you want to be cunning and conniving, or you want to be this, that, and the other. Yeah. Like, I'm not following his steps. People think, like you said, you don't necessarily need to follow the steps, but follow the principles. It is a big difference because the steps, like, what did, what did Jay-Z say to him? Like, I told you sell drugs. No, Ho did that. So hopefully you wouldn't have to you go. Have to go, man, bars. <laughs> <laughs> bars <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's like i don't want you to sell drugs just use the principles um i studied pimp and ken for a long time now of course everybody knows that my father was a bona fide pimp so i i learned some principles there it was iceberg slip for me yeah i followed pimp and ken for a long time and if you if you haven't read the book uh the 48 laws of uh pimpology I would highly recommend that. And it's not so much for the manipulation aspect of it. People don't understand it. You're constantly being manipulated all day. So you can keep your spirit and your principles intact, but still recognize what people are trying to do to you so you don't get pimped. And this is why, and even his correlation, he says, he'll give you the game. That's what I love about his chapters. He says, I'm gonna give you the game and I'm gonna give you the ism. The ism is what you're supposed to take, not the game. And the ism is, okay, let's say, for example, uh, it, it, one of his principles is uh, purse first, ask last. So, uh, for example, in that chapter, he says, you know, in, in the pimping world, a hoe must choose and turn over her purse before uh, she can get any of his pimping. Well, the ism is when you apply for that job, 
they want everything. They want they 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 want some sense of control so that way they can benefit the most for you. So whether you want that job, that manager is pimping you every day. That, Absolutely. That, that CEO is pimping the manager and so on and so forth. So he's saying what you're doing is taking pimp principles and applying them to the square world so that you don't get done or manipulated. And that's what people don't understand. My point was going back to what Tim says, you don't necessarily have to follow the steps literally, but if you could take the principles, maybe it can help you in that particular obstacle or that place in life that you're stuck. And maybe you can use those principles to propel you forward. Yeah. But that's, I love how you put that in the fact we got into this because in our community, it's how a lot of times we can have street smarts without common sense or common sense without street smarts. And it's because li literally, like what you said, I think a lot of shit's taken too literally. You know what I mean? But yeah. rightfully so, because people don't take the time to get to know who's speaking. So there's a difference between hearing and listening. A lot of people just hearing you. They're not listening to what you're actually saying, like trying to overstand what you're saying. You dig what I'm saying? So in that pimp culture and rap culture and thug culture, those are the biggest industries to me to where damn near everything they say in is code is symbol for something else. They're just using what they know to explain to you what they mean. But to the person that's hearing, you're going to have a block if you have emotional trauma or emotional resonance connected to what they're saying. That's the problem. That's yeah. why healing is so important, because now I can listen to you. But if I'm not healed, I'm being triggered by everything you're fucking saying. I can't even hear the message because it's pissing me off so much every time you say what you said. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? So we can never even get further. So then they start using these little euphemisms, using these quotes, because they stick. People have been saying this shit for thousands of years. It's not, nothing's new under the sun. Someone has thought this and said it and passed it down. Someone else said it. It kept getting passed down to us. And we see through the game of telephone, the message usually changes. So if you have a message that stays the same through that long, that's right. the truth. That's I'm, the truth. Whether you want to accept it or not, it's the truth. That's one thing. <laughs> I say God don't make mistakes, but I tell you, I wouldn't have spent 10 years in gospel rap had I had the game. I would not have spent 10 years in Christian rap. If I had I got the game, something I got the game after I left because my eyes were open after I left. So therefore, and there's no disrespect to anybody that I worked with during that whole 10 year span. Yeah. But what I realized is that there's a big world outside of Christianity. And I know Christianity is a very large religion, yeah. but there's a whole world outside of that so therefore there are some people that like you said are going to be triggered or close minded that you cannot reach so there's you're putting a limitation on yourself by saying i'm just this and this is all i want to be and my way is right and during those lyrics that we were rapping and reciting it was basically telling the world our way is right your way is wrong yeah. and that's it but i didn't realize man we're limiting ourselves yeah. And look where Christian rap is right now. You hardly hear. Now, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of Christian rap out there. Don't get me wrong. But it's not a bigger culture as it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You know what I'm saying? I think it's, it got as big as it's ever going to be. Yeah. It's going to decline. And that's not good or bad. I think it just it is what it is. It is what it is. But we had delusions of grandeur. Like, oh, we're going to be platinum like Jay-Z. Or we're going to be. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you got to think, too, in those, like you said, when you limit yourself, there's so many other variables that's playing against you. I mean, look what happened to the church. A lot of people, I wouldn't even say stop believing in it. A lot of people who went outgrew it. And this younger generation didn't have to. They don't have to go. Hell, for a while, church wasn't even open during the pandemic. So church is not a big part of their life like it was a part of our life. It was where we went to eat, where we went to go to church, where sometimes we just got dropped off at because we ain't had nowhere else to go. You know what I mean? Some people went to work. It was a big part of our lives. Nowadays, it's just that building on the corner. You know what I'm saying? And right. the issue, that's what they don't understand with anything. That's the trigger I hear in people when I speak about what they do. And they'll consider it calling them out. But I'm just speaking about what you do. You dig what I'm saying? Right. So my issue is not that you're doing Christianity or you're doing Christian rap. Like you said, my issue is that you're limiting yourself. And the problem with limiting yourself is now you become desperate. Now it has to work. 
now there is no plan B. There's just this one plan, and I'm going to put everything into it because it has to work. Those things usually fail. <laughs> if you're talking about it like that, it's going to fail. Yeah. You, you, you need it to work. So if you need it to work, you got to work for it. You got to pay your dues. You got to learn about it. You got to listen to it. You got to show up in the audience of it. You got to put some money into it. You got to put some time into it, some blood, some sweat, some tears. Then it'll start giving you back a little bit at a time. Yeah. And then as you consistently do it, it starts to show you it was never about getting anything back. The gift is I get to wake up and do this every day. The gift is that I'm creative. The gift is that I can rhyme these words. Most people can't do that. Yeah. Most people can't write a paragraph. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the gift is that I get to do it, not what it can do for me. So then once I start treating it like that, it's going to do things for me I could have never prepared for. I could have never dreamt or imagined or thought that this was going to come from it. That's the prize. But you got to do it so long to get to that point. People aren't willing to do it. You know what I mean? I agree with you that self-help, it, it killed the culture because it started teaching people just be, be rich, be successful. So what are they going to do? They're going to go to the most lucrative industries. You're going to have 100 people trying to make the league, 200 people trying to be a rapper, 300 people trying to sell drugs because they just see that it makes money. They see the jewelry again, but you don't see the journey, man. Damn. <laughs> So, so bookmark right there, everybody. Yeah. Today, if you have time, I want you to go to Netflix and watch two documentaries that are very key. If you have the time, if you have about six hours to kill, which I know you do, because everybody yeah. watches and shit like that, you, you'll make time. If you can make time to watch two documentaries, the first documentary, of course, is the American Gladiator story. It's, it's right on point with what Tim is just saying. That's good. The American Gladiator story, watch that and then turn right around and watch Wham, which is really George Michael, but it's, it's, it's the documentary Wham. And the two things that I got from you is what Tim said was so on point. The American Gladiators, I know Tim watched it. Yeah. They didn't care because they were doing nothing. They were grocery people. They were regular people that they were brought into this world and they was like, these were people who, let's go back to what Tim said. They got injured. Now they can't play professional sports. They got, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the time ran out and they didn't. But the one girl, Lace, I think she was like, man, after college, she was like, then what? Now I get to do this. And not only were they on national syndicated television, they got the tour and everything like that. It wasn't until, you know, the ego set in to where they're like, hey, we're not getting paid. And the pimp, let's go back to the pimp. Uh, Samuel Goldwyn was like, you wasn't worried about that when I picked your ass up off the street. <laughs> <laughs> Flipped it on your ass. He gave, he gave, listen, he gave him some real pimping. He was like, you was broke just last year. You know what I'm saying? I put money in your pocket. I took you on tour. I showed you things that you've never seen. Now you want a piece of what I've studied and what my father gave me over the years. No, it takes a lot of years to get to this level, baby. So you think you're going to muscle me? No way. You're fired. You know what I'm saying? So they lost sight of, you know what? Because here's what the biggest play would have been, is what 50 Cent and Jay-Z did. They said, okay, I'm going to be the hoe, but while I'm the hoe, I'm going to be learning. I'm going to be learning. Exactly. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be in these executive offices. Do you know that Jay-Z had Leo's ear for a good six to plus years, six to seven years before he started executing his plan? He was in Leo Cohen's ears the whole entire time. Do you know that 50 Cent stayed in uh what's your man's name that was real close to Dre that made uh Beats by Dre with Dre. The, the, I can't think of his name. He was the NWA. Yeah, he was. The, he was. The, he was the white guy that signed them. Yeah, I, can't. I forget. I know he's talking about. I forget his name though. But Fifty stayed close to him. He stayed close to Dre. So why they was using him? Because you got to go back and think. Fifty's deal was for a million dollars. That was it. Yeah. At that time they broke down how fast a million dollars could go. So Fifty was like. Okay, I've been shot. 
Uh, this is the success that I've been waiting for all my life. I'm not going back to the street. So he had to make these adjustments and he had to make these alliances. Get back to my story. I, I hate to digress. What I'm saying is that when you get put on, you're going to get stroked. Yeah. Whoever's, whoever's putting you on, you're going to get stroked. The name of the game is, okay, let me work this corner for a minute, but I got to be in somebody's ear. So when I save up enough or when I get enough resources together, I can now be the pimp. And now I can start, you know what I'm saying, you know, putting workers out there, as we say, you know, hoeing or what have you. But a lot of people don't, they want everything for free. And one of the rules of the game is the game is to be sold, not told. You've got to put in, as Tim will say, the blood, sweat, and the tears, and the time to just sit back and shut the fuck up and learn. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of people now are starting over in their lives, starting new careers, starting, you know, new ideas, new relationships at 50. Like, when you have all this time to be experimenting, that's what this time is for, is to experiment, try new things, say new things, eat new things, go new places, shit, be alone for a little bit. You know what I mean? Get to really know yourself. You dig what I'm saying? Because that's a constant process of everything. Like, that shit hits the nail on the head, like, with the 50 and J. Those are, that's why people like that are my mentors. It's the philosophy of what they did and what they used to do it. It's not what they did. It's not who they are. You know what I mean? I've never been starstruck. Usually people like us do good in the entertainment industry because we can be in the room with them and not unraveling and actually still getting work done. You know what I mean? And I'm like that in every room I go into. Like, if I have to be here, if I want to be here, I might as well learn something. It doesn't matter why I'm here. I might as well learn something because then the time is well spent. But when we go work for this job for 20 years and then get anything from it but a paycheck, you feel like you wasted your time. I could have been there for 20 years for free learning and I wouldn't feel like I wasted my time at all. Look at school. I right. don't feel like I wasted my time at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I wasn't getting paid for them eight hour shifts. And, and here's, here, here's where, you know, and I will tell you, if I tell you my triumphs, I'll tell you my failures too. When you're a mentee, you cannot worry about the harsh treatment of your mentor. A lot of times, especially in this generation, they worried about how they're being treated. They worried about how they're being talked to. Yeah. And a lot of times when you ask somebody to mentor, number one, if they've taken the time out to say, I'm going to show you the game, especially for free, stop worrying about the abuse. Yeah. Get the game because you're going to be fine. As long as they ain't got no gun to your head or anything like that, <laughs> you're going to be okay. You know, check your ego. That, and that's what I see a lot in this generation is that, that you can't tell them shit because they feel like, oh, I can Google this or I can do this, that. Google's not going to give you real-time action. Google's not going to give you the little things that are around the corner that you can't see. They can only give you concepts. They can only give you an outline. But the game is to be like, all right, watch for that person in the corner. Watch this over here under the table, this, that, and the other. The things that you don't see. So this is why, you know, you can, I, I've, had, I've had three mentees and then once I really start drilling them about certain things, they get an attitude. And I just look like, well, I didn't have to do shit. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I feel mean, my life going on as well. Yeah. And that's that's when, but that's why listening is so important. You know what I mean? That's that's where aura energy comes from. Cause that's why I believe that shit is very real. Cause you gotta pick up on things like that and you start to learn who's new at what they're doing and who's done what they're doing. You know yeah. what I mean? I always have taken the abuse when it comes to my educators, my mentors, my teachers, mm -hmm. but it's only people that I have felt they were in my position before. Cause you get a lot of people who just trying to teach and they ain't really learn shit. They mm -hmm. just reciting information. They've memorized something, which ain't to me, he's not understanding it. You mm -hmm. think what I'm saying? And then it's different when you know someone took this abuse too, the person that's giving it. It's different when you start teaching people and understand how frustrated it is trying to teach somebody some shit. Yeah. Especially when they're just going against trying to learn it, but still show up like, yeah, I want to know, like, damn, it don't, it don't seem like it. That shit gets frustrating. So then that becomes the two-way street of, one, a relationship, and also the test. Because your test, too, is being able to get yelled at and still focusing on what you're doing. That's just a distraction. That's why they're doing that. 
they want all these distractions to go on so you can just stay focused on what you're trying to think on. You dig? So it's it's almost intentional. And then people fall into that trap. You react. That's the worst thing you can do because that's the lesson you now learn about life. You know what I mean? Like people think us calm, mild mannered people like got it easy. Like, hell no. We've had it harder. I've constantly had people ridiculing me and trying to nitpick at what I was doing while I'm trying to defuse a bomb. And you're over your shoulder like, you going you gonna to touch that wire? You going to use these type of scissors? What the hell? What's going, what type of glasses you got on? Them glass, like, <laughs> you got to still <laughs> not blow up. <laughs> you dig? <laughs> like, you got to focus on what you're doing. So in the beginning, I hated it. I hated it so much. I wasn't good at anything because I couldn't focus. I would just take myself out the game. Like, all oh, this motherfucker talking again. I'm done. I'm leaving. And right. then one day I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to just try to ignore it. <laughs> I'm going to just try to tune it out. And you get better as it goes on time. You know what I mean? Almost too good at it. But I didn't realize until I became a parent, shit, I, I tune them out sometimes. I'm I'm thankful for my training. I'm glad I had that person ridiculing me. I'm glad I had the family who cuss each other out in spades because I I was getting better. I was learning how to not let that shit distract me. People coming into the room with an attitude, a bad day. I'm learning how to not let that distract me. I'm constantly learning discipline. And it's through, it's being in the field. You dig? This is what I tell people all the time when it comes to meditation, spirituality, yoga. Like when things are calm, that's just you getting your plan ready. That's you preparing to be good at it. This shit is not important until everything is falling around, falling down around you. That's when now you're going to know if you actually been doing this or not. It doesn't, it, anybody can sell calm waters. What you going to do when it's a hurricane, when it's the worst storm you've ever been in? And you still got to produce. You yeah. still got to function. That's what makes Jay-Z, Jay-Z. That's what makes LeBron, LeBron. It's not the athletic ability. It's not the rhyming. It's the fact that they were still doing this while their world was falling down behind them, while friends is stealing from them, people lying about them, people yeah. suing them, people denying them, people saying, oh, this is never going to work. They still have to perform at a high level. That's what makes you great. It's not the things you do. It's what you can withstand. And, and, and the only way you take, and let me, let me rephrase that, because energy is real, so I don't want people out there saying that I got to go find the abusive person. The only, I I will take tough love over abuse any day. The only way I would tell you that you learn from abuse is when you're in a no choice situation, like if you're in prison and you have a seal, or if you're in college, or if, I mean this is the teacher that you've been assigned, or this is your drill sergeant, or in a lot of places where you can't help but, or this person is the only person that has this information, and they're just being a complete asshole. Mm -hmm. So you learn from that. But I would choose tough love. You have to have, in your mentoring, you have to have some sort of love in there. You have to have. Absolutely. You have to have some sort of. So if you have a choice between tough love and this abusive mentor, always leave the abusive mentor if you have a choice. But other than while you're in these situations, don't try not to take things personal. You know, just know that. 100%. Because. Because it's all subjective. You know what I mean? This is why I believe in duality. Abuse is subjective. It depends on the host. And it, it, there's a lot of variables when it comes to abuse. Because there's a fine line between abuse and kink. Like, there's a very, you know what I mean? There's a line between the two. And it's not that, it ain't thick. You can see it, but it ain't that thick. You dig what I'm saying? Because it depends on the person. If I get in a relationship with somebody, like, no one chooses abuse. Like, no one chooses to be hurt. Right. But we also are living a life of suffering. Like, you're, you're going to suffer. You have to. Absolutely. You're going to suffer about what you think tomorrow's going to be. You're going to suffer about what you didn't do yesterday. You're going to suffer for what you got to do today. Nah. You're going to suffer going to school. Like, these motherfuckers going to make fun. Why they cut my hair like this? They going to make fun. But they wasn't cut. Your parents didn't cut your hair so you can get ripped all day. You dig what I'm saying? So it's it's subjective to a person who doesn't work out and I get in a relationship with them. Like, look, babe, you got to do 10 push-ups every morning. She's going to consider that abuse. That's abuse in her head because of how her life is set up. If she already does 100 push-ups a day, that's not going to change anything about her life, that 10 push-ups. Right. You know what I mean? She probably going to come at me like, yo, raise the bar. Give me 50 a day. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? That's a kink now. Like, you're into this shit. Like, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> 
So to me, something my coach said to me in middle school that always sticks to me is KYP. You have to know your personnel. Like, first, you have to get to know who you're even involved with. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Because the student picks the teacher. The teacher does not pick the student. And that's where a lot of teachers fail. They're trying to pick the smart student so they can look like a smart teacher. Hell no. Go do little Timmy over there and don't listen to nobody's ass. Go turn that motherfucker (laughs) into a functioning member of society. Then I'll start to, you know... I'll start to see what you want to. But you're taking students who are already going to shine. You dig what I'm saying? Because they got to come to you for that mentorship. And their mindset is either going to look at it as abuse or tough love. See, I always look at it as tough love. When I'm getting to know who I'm dealing with, I have to dial it back. When I'm dealing with my kids, they don't look at it as tough love. They look at it as abuse. So my grace for them is saying, okay, you're right and I'm right. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying I'm wrong. Because there's a lot of people who love how I love. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that's like, oh, no, that's too much. You dig? They're both right. (laughs) I have to have discernment and pick my people. The motherfuckers that enjoy that. They see me like, oh, yeah, some tough love. Not the motherfuckers like, oh, it's him again. That's my choice now. You dig? So I can sit around all day and say, well, these people are abusive. These people love me. But I still have to decide who I be around by the energy they give off. You dig what I'm saying? So... I, that taught me just be yourself. Be tough with motherfuckers. Don't be nice because you think now they're going to learn. Because I've been nice with people and they still don't get it too. So I'm like, fuck it. It's tough love. I'm going to tell it to you how it is. I Listen, when it comes to my father, I tell people that is the bluntest, meanest motherfucker. Yet. <laughs> and, they, and, and for those who, my father is seven different people to seven different people. He's seven people to seven people. Yep. And when I tell you there are people that love that man. There are people that love that man, but he is the most blunt person. And 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 I tell people now, he gets on my fucking nerves because of <laughs> you know you don't have to talk to me like that. But that's who he who he is. Yeah, yeah. And we that's that's why this is our journey. That's why we're the only ones that can star in our movie. Because you got a choice whether you want to deal with that or not, and he got a choice whether he want to be like that or not. And to me, both of us accepting each other for who we are is love. Your love for me is saying, you don't have to like who I am. My love for you is saying, you don't have to change who you are. You dig what I'm saying? And then us having a healthy relationship means we can find middle ground. When we out at the bar, we don't talk about this. We're not arguing about it. We're not bringing it up. We out the bar. When we out, we go to the batting cages. We at the batting cages. We ain't talking about what you didn't do 20 years ago. We ain't talking about how you about to be in five. We being in the moment. We being present. And if I can't be present with you in that moment, we don't have anything. Right. You know what I mean? To me, when it comes to my homies, because I'm the hardest on them. You dig? Like, if you can't tell me the truth and be honest with me, you're not my brother. You're not nothing to me. You dig? Don't tell me you love me. Don't tell you care about me. I'm going to let you know up front. Caring about me is telling me the truth. If you find a reason not to tell me the truth, that's your choice. Don't ever put that on... Well, you forced me to, nah, I ain't forced you to do shit. I gave you an opportunity and you moved in your character. So if we have to disconnect from this point, use it as a lesson. Still learn from this. Don't be so wrapped up into what happened. You're bitter now. Keep going. Keep going, Tim. I got to Yeah, like don't be so wrapped up into what you're doing now that you can't see forward in your life. And that's what's happened to us in, in, in this world. That's what's happened to us in this lifetime. That's to me is what's created all of these separation anxiety. People are afraid of who they're going to become when their life changes. That's the point. That's the fucking point. You're, you're not supposed to know. The, the chapter, it's so funny how you can read something and then you can find an immediate way to apply it to your life. And no, no greater uh, example was from last night. So I'm reading the chapter of Robert Greene and Human Nature because this, this, this the, the page is about 700 pages. So I'm still... Trudging through this book, man, but it's, it's teaching me a lot. So I'm at the chapter where it says, attitude determines your altitude. Now, of course, that's a cliche that everybody has heard before. But everybody that knows me, truly knows me, and I'm letting you inside right now, is they know that I'm a charismatic person on this camera. I'm a charismatic person on that stage. I'm a charismatic person behind those turntables because... That's the alter ego that I created. There's a safe part of me 
that allows me to be confident behind this camera and to be articulate and everything like that. Put me in a natural social setting, I'm socially awkward, I'm quiet, I'm not as confident. You know what I'm saying? So therefore I shy away or I, I don't even go to these places or because my introvertedness, I have to recharge somewhere in solitude because basically I'm overwhelmed by having to open up and be myself, which I don't, that's something that I'm still working on that I don't feel is acceptable in audiences. Now, let me give you a prime example. Two examples, and I'll, I'll, I'll make a really quick, Tim. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been telling my significant other how marginalized that I've been in, in the community and things of that nature, and that's no secret or whatever. Now, we get to the color of summer, and, you know, we, 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 we get into, inside the color of summer. Great affair. Big shout out to Jeff and, and D-Rob and everybody who put that together. Everybody's rushing up to me. Lane, Lane, oh, my God, Lane's here. Da, 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 da. And she's looking at me like, what's your problem? Marginalize my ass. That's your perception. <laughs> right, right. Of being marginalized. Maybe it's your attitude that has not caused you to network with these people properly. Because I just seen 50 people come up to you. And now whether it's fake or not, it's still the acknowledgement like, hey, I didn't come up to them. They came up to me. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. She was like, maybe it's how you're looking at it, because it seemed like a lot of these people are willing to work with you. It's just maybe, you know, saying just change the landscape. And that was just something. And then the other thing that she said was key was like, stop taking everything so personal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If somebody says a sly remark to you or does something kind of shady or just, you know, gives you a hint of jealousy, don't take it as personal. Don't use that to cut that person off for life. Use it as fuel to navigate. Now, this is the second. Yeah, because I have comments about the first. But yeah, go to the second. So the second one was last night. Everybody knows I get social anxiety in social settings. We get out in the club, and the group of people, the group that was there, it was like, yo, let's go get something to eat. Now, normally I would go home. I'm like, nah, I'm cool. I got a, I got a, um, got a podcast in the morning. Da, da, da. And I thought about it again. Attitude determines altitude. So I said, fuck it, let's go. But while I'm there, I'm telling myself, this is going to be great. This is going to be awesome. Da, 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 da. I'm going to be okay. Da, da, da. And the more I thought about it, I started to feel good. So by the time I got to the table, I'm shocking myself that I'm saying jokes and I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting people laughing and shit like that. And I'm like in an element that I've never been in before. And I really enjoyed my time at three in the morning with this group of people that was half my age. But I was like, Everything is formulated in your head. And if you can just make that tweak of adjustment of the, the attitude, maybe that would change the outcome of what we want. But go ahead, Tim. I was going to say, and I see how both stories are, you know, connected and similar. I was going to say I'm torn. I'm torn because I can see both sides. I can see how you feel and I can also see what she's saying. Um, I think this is what separates when you do something for a long time versus when you're a part of something, you dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of what you do when you become great at what you do, let's say DJ, like let's say basketball, let's say writing, it becomes muscle memory. And there's times where I have feelings towards my work that I have to, I have to negate. You dig what I'm saying? Because I know what the fuck I'm doing. I know how I'm feeling based on how this looks. But also, I've been doing this for 15 years. Like, I know what I'm doing. And I know how I feel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Like, who people see me in as public, I am completely different at home. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. And people assume I have this extravagantly crazy life with all these people, and I don't. Like, a lot of the things I can say I've done, I was alone. It wasn't five people who can be like, yeah, I was there, and we did this and did that. And, and it's for me, it's because I know people. You dig what I mean? Like, right. so yeah, they show you things time and again where you're like, oh, I want to give them a little hope, but I've been doing this for 15 years. I've been yeah. doing events for 15 years working out with people. Like, we can look through my DMs. I done reached out to people. I done did my due diligence. So it also comes a time where we can't be naive in what we're doing. We can't assume that just because there's a bunch of love around, we got to start giving out love. Like, nah. And I know why I'm being so closed off and reserved. I know what this person saying behind my back. I know two years ago you told me I was never going to make it. So 
So yeah, you're going to act cool with me in this room full of people because a lot of people can't deal with that embarrassment and shame. But again, see, that's what being secure is with me. I don't deal with shit like that. Right. I have nothing to be embarrassed about because I know how I do business. Mm -hmm. You dig? But that's something that's going on with Columbus. Like, you get a lot of people in the right room and it seems like everybody on the same page. So it's like, why ain't we been doing this shit then? Why yeah. are these projects? Where, where, so where's the work? <laughs> There's a reason why it's not happening. And it ain't because of me all the time. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and I don't want, you know, the audience to think I was naive to the po po politics and the political aspect that we were in the color something because it was very political. I, I just, oh, man. A lot of times, okay, so let me let me give you a prime example. Yeah. There was this documentary that I watched over and over again about Russell Simmons. And he tells a story very detailed about him and Rick Rubin. And he said that you would have thought that Rick would have been able to open up more doors and to get in more rooms because he was white. And he was like, Rick actually fucked everything up because he was the type of person, if he felt fakeness, if he felt that you was trying to smooth him, he said, fuck everything. I'll just, I'll just start all over. And he was that's always going to start all over. And that's me. That's I'm me. The type of person, if I, if, if, if you, you say some slick shit, or if you do some slick shit, man, fuck you. I'll, 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 yeah. I'll do something else. Straight up. And, and, and Russell was the one that they didn't realize that, um, he was the one that said, okay, we got to know. Well, let's see how we can get to a yes. And he would take the abuse or he would take the manipulation and try to win that person. I'm not that guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. So I do contribute to a lot of my marginalization because you got one time to play me. Yeah. Yeah. And I ain't going to make, I ain't going to beat you over the head with it every day, but I'll never forget. Yeah. Especially if there's an emotional attachment to what you did. Every time I see you, I'm going to get that queasy feeling like I'm never going to forget what you did. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always going to make you stand on that. Because to me, again, that's being a good friend. I'm still trying to be a good person to you. I'm going to stay out your way. I'm not going to bring you no bad vibe, no bad juju. I'm going to just do my thing. That's the best thing I can do for you is mercy. You dig? Yeah. So I'm still trying to be a good person, even though you wronged me. And to me, wronging me is not... You didn't give me what I want. It's you said you was going to do A and B happen. That's a problem for me every fucking time. Because you could have said nothing. But Man. don't tell me A going to happen and then so comfortably give me B like I'm not going to notice. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm proud of myself because there was this one guy in the summer, right? Now, I know we don't fuck with each other. When I tell you we don't fuck with each other, but used to be if I would see him at an event, I would try to be the bigger person and be like, yo, what's up? And he would give me that half ass. Oh, yeah. that? But this time, it's so funny. It's like I was determined to stand on it. I didn't fuck with this person. But at every corner tail, we would run into each other. I don't care. <laughs> fuck. You know what I'm saying? It was one time that he was coming down the hallway in the museum. And I just went the other way. Like, But I just kept running into this nigga. Like, God damn. You know what I mean? But I stood on my shit. I was like, I'm not going to be the bigger person today. I'm not going to fuck with you. Period. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the and that's the hard part. You know what I mean? And this is why I understand everyone's important. You know what I mean? I But I don't have to be a part of what you're doing. Like, a Chinese nigga is going to sell you in China. A Jamaican going to sell you in Jamaica. A New York nigga going to sell you in New York. Yeah. But that don't mean I have to be a part of any of those things. And I also, on the flip side, I can wish them well. I hope y'all succeed. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But we can't be naive to the fact, like, I just met these people. You've had a whole lifetime without me, and it seems like things are going pretty all right for you. You can't make the argument for me now I have to be a part of something for it to function. And I've been over here this whole time. That's what keeps me where I am. You know what I mean? That's what helps me detach from things. Cause that's a part of entering them. I feel like I've been having this conversation a lot past the last three weeks, like telling people your worth, your, like your value is the work you turn down. It is not your resume. Your resume is just those fun decorations to put on the wall. You got war stories. You got hood stories. You can tell people what you've done. That's not your worth. It's these deals that you're, you're too good for. It's these deals where they try to shortchange you and you like, nah, hell no, nah. I'm not signing that. That's what it is. So we got to start looking at life like that. But so many people, I feel like, 
they they're desperate. <laughs> That's why that desperation kicks back in. They're desperate. You know, that album ain't been going. So, oh, that's my DJ friend. Hey, what's up, homie? Don't treat me like that ever. Nobody. It's going right. to make me not like you. Yeah. Fuck with me how you've been fucking with me in all circumstances. Don't ever find a reason to be cool with me when you have it this whole time. And I am and I consider myself to be a good person. I'm not trying to terrorize nothing. I don't, con you know what I mean? Like, I don't start issues between people. Like, I'm not confrontational with niggas when I don't need to be. So if you're going to choose not to talk to me, I'll respect that version of you. But and don't ever find a reason because we ain't here with the mayor or we ain't here with Kanye now. We buddies. You dig? Like, because I'm going to make, I'm going to be the same motherfucker every time. And, and you know what? People say make being a bigger person makes you feel better. No, standing in your truth makes you feel better. So I felt a lot better by not being a bigger person and speaking and instead standing in my truth and just saying, man, I don't fuck with you. Yeah. And I'm not going to go out of my way today to fuck with you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I felt better that way. It was, And it wasn't no big attitude. Like, because a lot of times, this is what I hate on Facebook. Or somebody has to broadcast. They don't fuck with somebody. You don't have to broadcast it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when somebody feels like, well, I'm not going to speak to this person. My life still goes on. I still have to hustle. We're talking about getting back into the saddle of things. My life still has to go on. Whatever my goals were, because you decide to separate yourself from me or marginalize from me, doesn't mean that I have to stop. There are a lot of people, especially in my two-year hiatus, this is what made me really stop holding grudges to people. Especially, you know, we've talked about this with my father. My father was still getting accolades. My father was still going on. To, and I didn't know what his inner workings of his life were. But it looked like he was doing fine to me. So me cutting him off didn't stop him from living. Me, you know, having an attitude or a grudge didn't stop the great things from happening in his life. We think, uh, oh, this person did me wrong. So that by me cutting them off or me, oh, you no, karma don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But, but the best Revenge, I wouldn't even say revenge, but the best thing you can do is still go on and release that person and move on with your life. Because basically, yeah. whatever friction is, is causing you to be stagnant, or at least as you're trudging along in your journey, you don't have peace on your journey. But by releasing that person, it's not saying, I don't fuck with you. It's saying, whatever we have going on is causing this constriction, and I have to release it so that I can move forward in this direction in peace yeah and it's to me it's all ego driven you know what i mean i've been in that situation before too i mean you know how easy it is when you're doing events and when you out in the club and shit to just run into a motherfucker so i've run into a lot of people i didn't like and, and it's half and half some people i'm gonna just nobody in here would know we got this going on the other people everyone in here is gonna feel what we got going on you know what i mean and the first person, the first type of person, I, I realized it was my ego. I was, because I was more worried for them than you are for me. Like, you really out here not liking me. And you might get drunk and do some dumb shit one day and I'm going to have to hurt your ass. Now, <laughs> I'm trying to tiptoe around you because I don't want you to piss me off to where I got to hurt you. You dig right. what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's still ego driven. And it's the same emotion, like, like you said with your dad, because I used to have that too when I was younger. Like, when I'm cutting the motherfucker off, like, I hope y'all life sucks after this. Like, oh, I know they're going to be miserable without me calling them and me checking on them and, like, fuck them. You know what I mean? <laughs> All ego-driven, you dig? And it gets you to the point to where, yeah, you can walk away. That's an option. You know what I mean? It's always an option. Shutting up is always an option, you dig? But there's this third option spirituality starts to give you. And it's being fine with what whatever happens, being fine with the unknown. So instead of you saying, man, I wish something bad happened to them and they get hit by a bus tomorrow and die and now you feel sorry, you and this, I'm fine with whatever. You've done something to me that whatever can happen to you and it, my life is going to keep moving forward. Right. So if I say I want you to have a bad day tomorrow and you get struck by lightning, I'm going to sleep good tonight. Ain't no part of me is going to be regretful or be like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. And nah, like, I meant that. You did something to me, you dig, that I don't. I have no filter now for what happens to you. Right. And I still have people in this world that I'm like that with. That's the duality. Just because I'm nice to Susie don't mean I got to be nice to Sally. Like, y'all two different motherfuckers with two different relationships with me. 
So never look at how I am with somebody else and dictate how I should be with you. Ask yourself, how are you with me? That's going to dictate how I am with you. Mm -hmm. then, there's billions of people in this world I'll never meet. They're going to live, be born, die. I'll never come across them. I have no problem with putting other people on that list, with scooting them to the other side of people that it just doesn't move me. What happens to you? You dig? Right. It can't because I have to be so focused on what's happening to me. That's getting back on the horse. But what get what helps me mentally is I'm not afraid to fall off and have to get back on again. I'm not afraid to change horses. I'm not afraid to get in a wagon. I'm not afraid to now be the horse trainer so my kids can ride the horses so yeah. they can get back and fall off. I'm not afraid of the, the endless possibilities of what can happen, you dig? And that helps me be secure through life. That doesn't mean all the good things happen to me. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? That means no matter what happens, I know I'm going to be fine. And that's that's important to know. And, and that's why yesterday reading that chapter was a game changer for me because, you know, you automatically think change your attitude, change your attitude. And I look at it as not change your attitude. Like, oh, I'm just going to force myself to be happy. Right. Change your attitude is how you think about things. Because I told myself, I said, there's no way in hell. I'm almost 50. I can't be fake to anybody. I can't, I can't hang around people I don't like. But changing your attitude means that if I need something from this person, I can hold a conversation at least and change my attitude as to what the goal is. What the goal in mind is with me in collaboration with this person that I don't like and see if we can find a common ground. If not, then, you know, if, if whatever we do when we come together, we can't find a common ground, then I'll practice the separation. But if I need this person or there's something that I feel that we can work together to accomplish, but I don't necessarily like them as a person, changing my attitude is saying, you know what, they are a fucked up individual, but they're, they mama like them, they kids yeah. Like them, they friends like them, so there's some good qualities about the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? It's just that we don't clash. We we're not compatible, and that's okay. You know what I'm saying? But what I have to do in a gross moment is to say I have to stop alienating myself from great resources. If I'm going to, because Tim, we're both in the world of media, so we need people. Yeah, and absolutely. I, Continue to live my life to like just something that I don't like based on my ego to cut people off. I'm not helping my business and I'm not helping my purpose by doing that. So me personally, I had to make some adjustments to get back in the saddle to say, let me hold myself accountable. The hardest thing a man can do is look in the mirror and say, I'm the wrong. I'm in the wrong. Yeah. The hardest thing. I put out a post yesterday, man, and this shit was so... It hit me like a ton of bricks. It's easy to love somebody. And when I say it's easy to love somebody, it's easy to love somebody from the outside, from what you see, their looks, how they articulate themselves, what they got going on in their life. It's easy to love somebody. Now, once you get to know that person, it's hard as fuck to love yeah. them. They want to be loved. It's yeah. hard as fuck to get inside of their idiosyncrasies and any all these quirks that make them who they are. Now, when you get to see the dark side and the light side, you question, like, do I really, because you only love that person based off of your perception or that 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 preview of them. But really, once you get to know them, you're like, man, do I really like this motherfucker? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And this is why social media fuck things up because people are together based off of representation. This is why, you know, you shouldn't meet anybody in a club because they're going to give you the best representation of themselves. But as you, you know what I'm saying, you have to think as you get to know this person, what environment did I meet them in? You know what I'm saying? What, under what circumstances did I meet them in? And you'd be like, oh, you start to ring a bell. But yeah. at, at the end of the day, it's really like when we, we have, when we study these, this abuse and when we study, you know, the course after we got out of the, uh, a toxic situation and I'm, I'm really talking about business here or a, a friendship or a circle that you're in you hold yourself accountable and says I fought my way into this yeah. or I, you hold yourself accountable and say I look at this group of people and wanted to be in the in crowd so when yeah. I got confused let me hold myself accountable because I wanted to be a part of something that wasn't a part of me you know what I'm saying? But people don't aren't willing to hold themselves accountable. They see the glitz and glamour in the club, and they see everybody popping bottles and 
doing all this shit like that, knowing damn well you might not even like this group of people, but you fought your way in. Yep. And it's and like you said, it's easy to get in and it's hard to get out. And it's and it's us that's creating that block. You know what I mean? Um, relationships is probably one of the the easiest teachers in the world of falling down and getting back up. Like you have to try at a relationship. You know what I mean? All of them, all the time. You have to constantly be learning and growing. And that comes with getting out of the embarrassment of having to leave, of like you said, being wrong. Because a lot of people I feel like they associate with leaving is I'm wrong or I quit or I give up. Like, no, nah, that's the point of all of this. You know, as humans, we live through judgment. We select things through deselection. Literally, that's how we live. <laughs> we figure out what we want by knowing what we don't want. You yeah. dig? So that, that's the point of dating. The point of dating is not to end up together and get married. Because everybody that you date, you ain't going to end up with. That's that's unrealistic. You dig what I'm saying? So the point for you is to grow as a person. And the way you grow as a person is you identify why you're here and what is going to cause you to no longer be here. You dig? And that's something we grew up as men. We we got criticized as that because, like, oh, you wasted that girl's time. Nah, I, I got to know her, fam. <laughs> I got to know her. And I'm out of here. Like, that that was the point. <laughs> I wanted to get to know if we was compatible. If we not, I'm leaving. I'm not about to stay here now because we entered it. You dig? But I'm that same person in any part of my life. In college, in the first semester, I go to the wrong class and realize I'm in the wrong class. 30 minutes in, I'm going to get up and leave. I'm not going to stay out of embarrassment and not want to hold myself accountable. I came to the wrong class. Like, I'm going to go be where I'm supposed to be at every point of my life. I'm always going to make sure I'm where I want to be. And if there's a lot of arguing and chaos and bickering and violence, this is not where I need to be. You dig? That's an easy decision for me at this point in my life. When I was younger, it was a harder choice for me because of my mindset. Because I was constantly living the ego. I was trying to make sure everyone else was around me. Make sure everyone didn't feel small. Make sure everyone felt loved. Make sure everyone felt seen and heard, you dig? But I wasn't living my life. And that shit was definitely not being reciprocated. So it becomes a point in our life where we have to fight for our peace, you dig? That's what I learned being a revolutionary. Ain't nobody going to give you education. Ain't nobody going to give you peace and freedom. You got to fight for You got to take that stuff, right. you dig? So by the way we take it is we make that who we are. That means in every single situation... I got to stay 10 toes down was best for me. In every yeah. single situation, if you're pushing me away, I got to leave. I got to stop trying to fight through motherfuckers pushing me away and just leave. You dig what I'm saying? That's what I used to really take personal was the, the thing that I was developing here and the thing that I developed uh, when the, the Uptown show started, what, in 2012. So we're, we're in our 11th year. And the thing that I took personal was all of my mentees and all of my co-hosts and things of that nature. They went on to either do something better or they went on to do their own thing. But when it was always a friction of why we left, it was never a peaceful, okay, you want to do this and going. It was always some bullshit to why my mentees left. But I had to come to the realization that the Uptown Show may not have been the big stage, but it was the springboard for a lot of them for the big stage. And what you have to realize is that there are Geppettos and there are Pinocchios. Let me break this down for you. There are producers and there are the product. And this is the whole key of knowing your purpose, because a lot of times you don't realize that you're not the star. You're not the product. You're the you know what I'm saying? But when you know this, then you start to feel comfortable about certain things. Prime example, Bishop Sherman Watkins lives right here in Columbus, Ohio. And a lot of people know this, but a lot of people don't know this. Higher ground, always about in assemblies. People don't realize that Bishop Jakes studied day and night under Bishop Sherman Watkins. I mean, so Bishop Sherman Watkins being the producer, but the product was... Bishop Jakes, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, that same church, Greater Manual, that turned into higher ground, all, always about the assemblies, even though they have expanded the church, it's still that same church on the corner of Sinclair. But you go down to Texas and you see the Potter's House and the university and shit like that. But he learned everything from the producer. 
and he gives him credit all the time. So sometimes you you know Phil Jackson was a was 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 a decent basketball player, but he produced Kobe Bryant. He produced Michael Jordan. He produced all these great players that you know. So you have to kind of know what your purpose is. And then when the better you understand your role, like you said, Tim, the accolades come, the money comes. But when you lose sight of what your purpose is, you block your way to get to that person. I finally had to realize, oh, damn, Lane, you might be a producer. You might not be Tom Joyner. You might not be Russ Parr. You might not be Doug Banks or Ricky Smiley. But you might be the one to produce. Exactly. It's just the way of life, man. Yeah. And that to me is self awareness. People would like to try to uh, equate that to humility or being humble. To me, that's self awareness. And it's what separates the people who consider themselves successful versus the people who just do it. They accepted their place, they accepted who they were and what they brought to the table. And then now other people can see value in it because you see value in it. But as long as we undermine ourselves and we can't place ourselves in our purpose, other people ain't going to see it. You know, a lot of people, I feel like that's why they're getting into projects, getting into relationships. You want them to trigger who you are. You want them to show you who you are. If you couldn't do that for you, how the hell are they going to be able to do that for you? They're not trying to do that. they trying to figure out who they are. You dig? So yeah. if we all know our purpose, everyone has a place. We're not stepping on each other's toes. That is evolution that's what's supposed to happen we did what we did to be where we are today i didn't do everything i did to get a million dollars i didn't go learn everything i did to be the smartest nigga in the universe like mm -hmm. i did it because i didn't like where i was so instead of sitting and complaining about where i was i moved i got better i start thinking in places I where i wouldn't say shit now i'm saying thank you in times where i would keep everything now i have enough to give to people a little bit you dig like I'm a completely different person than who I was. To me, that's success. I won. You know what I mean? Like, all those lessons were the quote-unquote losses. So I already dealt with the losses. I want that shit up front. Because then when I get to enjoy my happiness, when I get to enjoy my peace, I don't want no disruptions. So I'd rather do my work up front. You dig what I'm saying? Work to get up off the ground. That shit's hard when you laying on your back. Get up off the ground. Then you got to climb back up on the horse. I hope this motherfucker ain't ran off. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's hard you dig but the more you do it and the more you love what you're doing you start to realize this is the gift this is the benefit this is the work perks the fact that i get to do this you know what i mean the fact that i'm able and bro that to me is is the reward in itself you know what i mean i had to look this comedian up now um back in the early 90s i was a big fan of comic view of course def jam comedy and there are comedians that you never end up knowing their name, but you know, you see them in appearances here, there, and there. You got the clip of them. You know who they are. Yeah, you, you don't know their name, but you know who they are. Yeah. So I followed this one comedian for a long time, and I want you guys to look this up uh, when you get some time. If you want to. His name is Tony Woods. And oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard her, bro. Yeah, so, so Tony Woods, you know, I've seen him a lot years and years later, so... Maybe five, six, seven years later, there's this comedian that has the same cadence as Tony Woods. And I think it's Tony Woods, but he's just starting out. He's a real young comedian. And I'm like, where have I heard of this cadence before? But the young comedian's name is Dave Chappelle. Mm. <laughs> so as he's growing, Dave is continually growing as a comedian. And I'm seeing Tony Woods less and less and less come to find out the same cadence Tony Woods has is the exact same cadence as Dave Chappelle. Tony Woods is Dave Chappelle's mentor this entire time. I don't know this, this whole time. So when um, come full circle, while the entire world is watching Dave Chappelle receive all this, he went on a tour of receiving all these awards. Well, one of the, the awards was the Mark Twain uh uh, pulls up, not uh, it's the Mark Twain Award, mm -hmm. and um, Tony Woods is in the audience. Now, this comedian, the world will probably never know, but he says everything that I have, I owe to this man, Tony Woods, and Tony Woods is right in the audience. So, as Dave is receiving his flowers, a lot of times we feel like we'll never receive our flowers, but the people that we springboard, like you said, Tim, they don't forget. They, yeah, they, yeah. 
don't forget it. So again, I had to close that part of what I was saying is like, when you know your purpose, you have to have confidence that your flowers are coming. It may not come in the time that you want them to. It may come, pos how you say the word, posthumously? Is that, is that, that I think that's how you pronounce it. It's Maybe. After, yeah. <laughs> after, you may receive these flowers well after death. Yeah, yeah. Because you may be the creator of something great. You may not be the great person itself, but you may be the producer of that. People, you gotta live with that. You gotta eat that. And to me, that's that's the plan. You know what I mean? To me, that is the generational health and what we should be passing down instead of the generational curses. It's the notion, I want you to be better than me. Yes, I seem great and, and mighty, and but I want you to be better than me. Mm. And that's hard for our generation. That's hard for this time because the world has become so sensitive. The world is so sensitive, you can't even call the world sensitive without it being sensitive. Like, the world is sensitive. People don't want to force you to be great. They don't want to expect you to have the knowledge no more. Everybody's fucking up, so they're okay with people fucking up. You know what I mean? I say this all the time. Like, there's no honor amongst thieves no more. People ain't looking out for each other. Because that's what it looks like. It's tough love. Yeah. It's, you know you can do but Are you doing your best? You can do better than that. And we don't have that attitude with each other no more. You know what I mean? It's right. a lot of, you know, why I still had to look to the, the, the hood culture and the pimp culture and the hustle culture. I We didn't have a lot of OGs, you know, as I started to grow up. My generation wasn't taking that role. They still aren't. Right. You know what I mean? I was just talking about this yesterday. And, and when I say OGs, I mean in the 90s. Like, you would have two kids fighting on the street corner, an older dude going to break it up and give them some game. Nowadays, motherfuckers is walking by while women is getting hurt and getting attacked and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like. That's crazy to me. And that's why the world is the way it is to me in certain parts. We're not holding each other accountable no more. You know right. what I mean? And that comes with first holding yourself accountable. That's why I'm on this healing kick. We can only give the world what it needs. <laughs> you feel yeah. me? Like, if the world shows like we need more force, we need to start gardening. If it shows a bunch of sad people, we need to start healing. You know yeah. what I mean? Unhealthy people, let's start getting healthy routines. So right now we gotta heal. We're we're so boxed into our trauma. We can't do anything else. We can't reach out. We can't stand up. We can't stand out. You dig what I'm saying? So a lot of us are just trying to run to the end and say, "All right, let me get the money. Let me get the success, and I'll feel better." You gotta heal the root. You gotta go to that little child that's in you that's hurting that you've been ignoring for however long, and you gotta address that. You dig what I'm saying? And then things progressively get better. It Listen, the, the child that you've been ignoring or feeding, a lot yeah, of people don't yeah. ignore that child, but you... They give them everything they want. <laughs> 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 but that's the sensitivity. You're trying to love them into loving you. You're trying to bite them into buying you. You're trying to not step on their toes so you can be in their favor. I promise you, the person that you push, when they go to be successful, they're going to Dave Chappelle you. They're going to look like, this motherfucker helped me more than anybody who was being a yes person. And the person that told me no. And when I say feeding, I want to I want to break that down. Yeah, you have people that do tolerate you. You have people that will celebrate you. But that doesn't mean that you have to stay in this realm of who you are. Let's say a person is a you know say is a is perceived as a mean person or a smart aleck or something like that. Just because a circle of people fuck with you doesn't mean that. Everybody has to fuck with you, you know. What I'm saying? But a lot of people think that they're right based on the cosign of, of, yeah. of, and you know what I'm saying? It's like so many people have told you, oh, you know what I'm saying? That you're right, you're right, you're right. No, you're really wrong. You know what I'm saying? But until you get that humbling experience, like no, you must have a pleasant attitude. You must, you know what I'm saying? If you want to propel for now, there are certain people who who get by with with shitty attitudes, but for the majority of us. We ain't 50 cent. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So you 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 can't treat people the way that you treat them and just think that everybody's gonna accept you. Now, if you have this cluster of people that's gonna love you regardless, then that's fine. But yeah. the world as a whole, nah, somebody going somebody's gonna make you stand on that shit one day. And that's a, see, and to me, I agree with you, and that's a two-way street. Cause a lot of times I've experienced 
people want me to be excited for what they have going on. You dig? I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to try to pick you up. But I can't be excited for your thing. You're supposed to be excited for your thing. Yeah. I want you to have your thing if you've earned it. I don't want you to just have what you want because I don't know what type of work you put in to get it. Mm -hmm. You dig? I believe in universal law. Like, if you put in the work, you deserve it. If you didn't, you shouldn't be asking for shit. <laughs> so for me, it's it's why communication is so important. It's why truth is so important and, and willing to sometimes hurt someone's feelings with what you got to say. Because yeah. everything I got to say ain't going to be pleasant. And I wouldn't be comfortable if everybody around me agreed with everything I said. I, I would think you're full of shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Motherfuckers don't like a lot of things that I like. And I know that. And, I, and I've come to terms with that so we can still be friends. Yeah, I mean... But I there's this sometimes... I feel like pressure to be excited about what a person has going on that I'm helping them get to or a mentee or be excited about their work or constantly looking for validation, the congratulation to tell me I'm doing a good job. This ain't about that. <laughs> like I'm here to show you that you can give yourself anything that you can imagine yourself having. That's it. I'm not here to make sure you get it. That's not my job. That's not my journey. I'm here to make sure I get my shit. Just yeah. how I don't put that on you, you can't put your stuff on me. That's too heavy for people. And you don't know what I got going on. You dig what I'm saying? So there has to start being that communication of truth between each other. Yeah, I'm here to help you as long as I'm here to help you. Don't set in your mind, oh, he's going to be doing this for 10 years. Let me just slack off for the first two. I could only had that two years for you. Now you're going to be real upset when I got to part ways. Right. And me living in my peace and doing what's best for me is doing what's best for me is parting ways with you, even though I know you're upset by how it went. So my lesson now became start appreciating motherfuckers while you have them. Don't yeah. give me no expiration date for how long you think I'm going to be here. I'm here right now. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Talk to me right now. Tell me the truth right now so then we can grow. But I, I, I have to dissociate myself that a lot with people. You know what I mean? Because I'm very monotone sometimes. And they're like, oh, you you don't sound excited about because I'm not. <laughs> I could be with my kids right now. I could be taking a nap right now. I could be well, I could be doing a lot of other things that helping you. That's just the truth of the fact. But it, am I going to give you 200 percent Yes. Am I going to pick you up when you fall down? Absolutely. If I got to connect, I can help you. Am I going to connect y'all? Absolutely. You dig, but you can't ask me to put a smile on my face. You just can't. Like I, I refuse to. You know what I mean? I might not be happy about what I have to help you do. Man, and, and, and listen, when it comes to, and we're gonna we're gonna create a footnote right here. Um when it comes to what do they say, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So when it comes to being benched, uh getting off your horse, getting off the saddle. When you come back, you have to have a different mindset. You have to reroute. You have to regroup, and you have to recreate. Uh, one prime example was I was not going to open my doors back to Radio 270, and I was not going to compromise. I was going to stand on this. I said I would rather close the doors than to come back and things look the same. Than, than things to be the same. The reason why you're getting Reflection Thursdays is because it's powerful. Me and Tim, as you can see, we're in different atmospheres and it's very impactful and people do grab a lot from it. But as you can see, Tim is not in the studio as he once was because it's not to my liking and it's not to my, where I want it. When I come back out, I do want the different camera angles. I want it to look like a podcast. So therefore, if I came back out and it looked the same, which basically it would just be a phone camera, I think the perception of the audience would be like, well, why did you leave? You know what I'm saying? Well, why were you gone all this time if you weren't going to be a better person? A lot of times when you take that step back out of the spotlight or you take that step back in the solitude, it's good to work on your diet. It's good to come back a better, lean, leaner person or, you know what I'm saying, fitting your clothes better or just something that people can say that time away was well spent to read that extra book or something like that. And uh, a lot of times when it comes to this thing right here, stop. I have to stop taking old ideas and putting them with the new things. This is why I keep my circle of young people around is because 
Podcasting is constantly evolving. It's constantly moving. The look of it changes every day. You're getting things down your timeline that says Twitter is now a dinosaur. You know what I'm saying? People thought Twitter would never go out. You know what I'm saying? But Twitter is now, they said Twitter is now the MySpace of social media. So Basically. if you're not keeping up and getting the information and recreating yourself, you too are going to be a dinosaur. So again, this step back for Radio 270 is to say, I'd rather close the doors than to give you what you saw six months ago, than to give you what you saw 12 months ago. Let me regroup. And then, because as I told you in my little excerpt today, something always keeps me in the game. I don't know what it's my purpose to do this because Tim, I got to give Tim his flowers. As Tim told you an hour ago, I'm a loyal person. And he's been nothing short of that. Tim is always through my hiatus. Hey, you good? You okay? We're still doing the show. There are times where I've had to disappoint Tim many a times. I'm like, bro, I'm not. Tim, will tell you the truth. I'm not in the headspace to do the show today. Now, that wasn't professional me, but I didn't want to give you some bullshit in front of this camera. And I would tell Tim, Tim, I'm just not in the headspace today. And Tim was like, all right, well, and Tim will be right back next week. Hey, big bro, are we doing this again? Mm -hmm. That's fucking loyalty. That's yeah. what you need out of a person. So when we do hit the Super Bowl, my, my nigga Tim was with me. You know, he was with, with me. Exactly. Tim. My nigga Tim understood I'm not going to give you the same product. He understood my recreation. He understood the time that it took to get things right. This is what a lot of times do. I know we're talking about recreation, but I know Tim, I want Tim to close out with mm -hmm. doing things right. Stop half-assing shit. Bookmark. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not going to talk about that yet because I want Tim to close on that. Yeah. <laughs> on a, stop half-assing, but we're going to stay, yeah. stay on recreation. But don't let me forget that. Doing things right, Tim. Don't let me forget that. So in the recreation process, you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable about not being in the spotlight. You have to be comfortable to say, you know what? They might forget about me. They might. But I've never seen a person when they emerge shining like new money be ignored. I've never seen it. Mm -hmm. When somebody emerges after the time that they worked on themselves and the energy and their aura is different, I've never seen that person ignored. And, and what was waiting for them is there for them and they receive it in abundance because they took the time to say, you know what, let me recreate myself. Let me work on myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what we all need. You know what I mean? This this atmosphere we've created was intentional. You dig? Like, everything I do is intentional for this reason. Yeah. And I'm never disappointed. You dig? Like, this is this is literally why I wanted to do podcasts instead of radio. Because to me, it's the same monster, same beast, same yeah. people you're dealing with, same interviews. Same, it's the same style. But the difference is radio is more like, a, it feels like a job to me. Yeah. Podcasts, I could do this whenever. I can drop the episode on my show in like two weeks, three weeks, because I don't have a schedule. You know, when I record, it goes up. That's what works for me. That's what's yeah. always worked for me. You know, and I've been doing this for five years now. And, and I've had the same kind the same thing you're saying. I've had those same feelings mm -hmm. like, oh, man, what if I a year three? What if I changed? What if I upgraded? But see, that's the thing with me. Um, it's if it's good enough for me, it's going to be good enough for them. You dig? Because. I can't sell my soul for the cameras. I can't sell my soul for the studio. I can't sell my soul for the engineer to be on my side, but I know I contractually got to do all this shit over here just to get the camera. I'd rather record on my phone. Yeah. Like I'd rather keep it real. You dig yeah. what I'm saying? And that's the aspect of keeping the show real. Is there times when I'm like, man, I could have bought this camera? Absolutely. But yeah. I also know I got real life shit going on that people online don't know I got going on. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't really care what they think or what they're expecting. You feel me? Whoever comes to watch the show, this show is for them. And the beauty mm -hmm. of the pod, the beauty of now we're streaming is, is it's up. Me and you could never do an episode again. We've given y'all so much game in so many episodes. So if you're not focusing on that and just focusing on all oh, this is changing, you was never here for us because we've been here. We yeah. going to be here. You dig what I'm saying? Whether it's <laughs> once a month, whether it's five times a month, whether we take a month off, because life is still happening all yeah. the time. 
And I always have to be aware of that. I don't get to run away from life. I made that choice for myself a long time ago. I got to be present. I got to be aware. Even when you're afraid, you want to close your eyes. You want to hide. Like, nah, you got to just walk. You got to have faith, you dig? And faith is not that everything is going to work out successfully. Faith is that by the grace of God, I get to do this again tomorrow morning. Mm. I get to do it again next week. In two <laughs> weeks again, I'm going to have some more information for y'all, some more topics. In a month, we're going to have another guest. You know what I mean? That's what I have faith in. I have faith that people are going to keep coming out and supporting us. Not even that they're going to tune in. Share it. Tell somebody about it. You dig what I'm saying? Come in and drop a comment about something you want us to talk about. That's what I have faith in. You dig? And that's what's important to me. It, it's, it's, it was never about the money, the numbers, and anything I do. I want to feel fulfilled in what I'm doing. I want to feel like what I did today changed somebody's life. That that's You can't put a price tag on that. You dig what I'm saying? Can't nobody give you that. So can't nobody take that away from you. Mm. And to me, I want to constantly live intentionally. If it's doing this show how we've been doing it the rest of our lives, I'm comfortable with that. I'm content. And I know there's going to be people that tune in. If we was doing this shit in our backyard, they're going to come out. They're going to pull up a chair. You dig what I'm saying? So that's important to me. And I think a lot of times it's easy to get the ego when you have all the nice fancy shit. Because we've been in studios. We've recorded. We've used the shit they using. That don't make you better at what you're doing. It gives a better quality of sound. But that don't mean the information is factual. That don't mean y'all actually having good dialogue, you dig? That, to me, is most important. And yeah. then if y'all gonna come give us a deal that makes sense for us for these cameras and shit, come on. But <laughs> if at any part of this deal I'm not okay with it, the phone work too. <laughs> we can do a live show. Like, I'm not, I'm not pressed because we've already showed ourselves we're gonna do whatever it takes to put an episode out. And you can't teach that. You can't buy that. You can't give that to nobody. Either you like that or you not. You know I like I mean? so to me, we success, we've been successful. And everything yeah. we do after this is just the cherry on top. So that keeps me reaching and climbing higher without that expectation, without that, you know, you bracing for the fall. Like now I'm just a kid having fun. You expect to fall down, you expect to scrape your knee, but you you expect to enjoy this and remember this moment too. You think I remember all of the shows. I yeah. remember the things we talk about, how the guests felt coming into the show before we talked to them. Mm -hmm. And how they felt afterwards when they left. Everybody was different. And me, yeah. only me and you got that. I'm mm -hmm. talking about when the cameras cut off. Right. You you see how excited they are in there to talk to us. They are staying an hour, two hours just talking. Like we we check in with them. Like, didn't you say you got somewhere to be? Oh, yeah, <laughs> fuck all that. So, anyways, I <laughs> yeah. that yeah. that to me is is monet, you know, is is monetization. Like that to me is the reward. So can't nobody validate what we do, you did? Because can't nobody go do it. And that was, and, 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 and to your point and to my correction, that was the point why Reflection Thursdays was not going anywhere is because the impact. I think the Uptown show was a production type of thing. But like you said, Reflection Thursdays was just something raw, something raw, short, uncut, that you don't step on that. Yeah, I'm using drug terms now. When it's <laughs> raw and uncut, you don't, you don't step on that at all. You know what I'm saying? You really... You give it to the people, and I appreciate, you know, the Adrians and the Jessicas and, you know what I'm saying, my baby who checks in from time to time. Um, I I appreciate them letting us be raw. That was one of the reasons why I said, well, no, Reflection isn't, isn't going anywhere because the content is so powerful. The content is so strong. But you also did help me when it comes to, you know what I'm saying, uh, the morning show that I'm developing as well. A lot of times, we, I mean, we look at hip hop, hip hop will be 50 years in the next uh, month or so. Um, it'll be 50 years old to, to that date, August. Wait, it seems so much older than that. Yeah, it's only 50 Doesn't years. It? <laughs> hip hop is only 50 years old. Wow, but that's crazy. Best time was before the money. And it's usually in any culture, the best time is before the money dilutes it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, again, this is why when, when Tim was on the show at the old building, I said, don't ever be discouraged about getting a podcast. Don't ever be discouraged if somebody say the podcast market is oversaturated. It is still a culture. Podcasting is a new culture and it's still in its infancy stage. Now, think hip-hop is 50 years old, 
podcasting is still in its infancy stage, so it's still raw and uncut. There are stars being born like Big Daddy Kane was being born right now. Tonight's conversation, them people will be in Dayton, Ohio, uh, I think in the next couple of weeks or something like that. But they're, they're rock stars. They're not making oodles and oodles of money like a lot of the big podcasters, but they're rock stars. They go from state to state, just like we did in hip hop. So as you said, Tim, I'm embracing this podcast culture because I get to be a part of something new, refreshing. You know what I'm saying? Podcasting is nothing but people telling their stories. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. like we did in hip hop, but now in a more articulate way that people are listening and tuning in and tapping in. So to your point, Tim, uh, it, it was right on point with this subject. It's like a lot of times we think that we need the BMW and we need the chains and everything like to be a dope artist when that's not what it is for real. You know what I'm saying? It's really the content of what you're presenting. We needed the Talib Kweli as much as we needed Jay-Z. You know? Absolutely. And Tal Talib Kweli never promoted the bling era, nothing like that. But he was still as relevant to hip hop. Most Def was still as relevant to hip hop as the Hot Boys and and, and Lil Wayne. And Jay Z will tell you that. They'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I love when Drake came on the scene, and everything he referenced was Slum Village. And most yeah. people don't know who Slum Village is, but you know this and Little Brother and people that he grew up listening to. But Drake would always reference these guys and say, no, I got my game from them. Paying it forward, man. That's what this is about. You dig? So everything you said was on point. Everything you speak is funny. Um, this is how we take the steps towards spirituality. You know what I mean? Because spirituality is infinite. This thing never stops. It keeps going on and on and on. You dig? And this is my essence. This is why I was put on earth. This is my purpose. Like, and people feel me sometimes because of what they got going on. And they feel like it's the Grim Reaper. You dig? Like, oh, man, he's here. It's the end. But it's actually the contrary. Like, it's the beginning. Like, if you're seeing me, it's the beginning. Because every ending is just a new beginning. It's infinite. It never stops. So when we keep that mindset, then everything you're talking, that's what starts coming out. Like, okay, let me be innovative instead of trying to recreate the wheel. You dig what I mean? Let me take the wheel and get four of them. Make a car. Like, I'll be innovative. I'll take what's already out there and use it to help me. So you took years of radio experience, and now you already a step ahead in the podcast game. You know, I've been doing podcasts for five years now. Like, I'm already a step ahead in the podcast game. I've already failed at a lot of things. People are going to stop doing this once they experience. And yeah. I'm still doing it. <laughs> you dig? So to me, it's just the beginning. It's a new era. And I like thugging it on the phone because once the cameras come, it's another new beginning. Yeah. I'm going to treat the show like it's a whole new show, you know, because I need that. Because in this past year, like, I've been over it. I've been cool with never doing pods again after this point. I'll still do interviews and shit, but I got so much content. Like, I have over 400 episodes. Like, I don't – I'm running out of shit to talk about. <laughs> That's why a lot of my newer stuff is just interviews. I'm just feeding off of what they want to talk about because, like, I ain't about to beat y'all over the hell with this information. You know what I mean? And I said it. Now I want to go do something else. Now maybe I want to not talk for two years. Like – I want to constantly elevate and learn new parts of myself. And sometimes we have to force that exploration by cutting something else off, by detaching. You dig what I'm saying? Like things have to fill our presence and it has to fill our absence. So yeah. you can't learn a lesson from me while we in a classroom every day. At some point, you got to graduate and go apply those lessons. At some point, you got to just be able to hear my voice in your head when you're going through it. You dig? So I yeah. got to shut up at some point. I got to go do something else. That's the constant evolution of just life, of what we doing in general. That's what animals do. You know what I mean? They raise their young. Their young take care of them. They raise their young. The young take care of them. It's a constant state, and they've accepted their place in that world. Humans, we're so disconnected because we want to be young when we old. We want to be old when we young. We don't know what we want to do. We want to do everything. We don't want to do nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? We want to do what they're doing. I don't want to do what they're doing. Like, it's just a constant stress and anxiety. So for me, in every aspect of life, I go to the lowest common denominator. I ask myself, does what you're doing make you feel good? Does how you're talking make you feel good? Does this person's energy make you feel good? 
Was that food good? How do you feel now after you've eaten it? You know what I mean? I always get back to how I feel. You feel me? I had that conversation just with myself. I'm not forcing my relationship to feel what I feel. I'm not forcing my kids to deal with what I feel, my business partners. I deal with that. So then when I go out into the world, I could be my best self for you. And that's the best gift I can give you. Mm. It's not money. It's not recognition. It's that I'm constantly giving you the best version of myself. You dig? That's the best way I can be for y'all. And it's difficult. I'm a very isolated person. I've lost a lot of good people in my life just because I don't keep up with them enough. And I respect that. That's their life. They want somebody who they can talk to twice a day. I can give you twice a couple weeks. <laughs> like, I can't. Because, again, I know myself. KYP. I know my person. I know who I am. Right. So I had to start listening to who I was. Because I used to let people tell me who I was. Because I didn't know. I had to question, you know, you didn't know enough. And now I know. So that's sometimes being still and being steady. Sometimes it's seeming like your your relationship or your job is boring. You know, like it's unfulfilling. And that means you're right where you're supposed to be. Everything ain't a, a huge ceremony. Everything ain't awards. Everything ain't a parade and popping champagne. Like that happens a very infant time on the journey. Like, a finite, a very small part of winning is actually celebrating. Yeah. A lot of times a winning is suffering. You feel right. me? So for me, I might I wanted to find people I was gonna suffer with. I wanted to find people worth suffering with. You know what I mean? And that's that's why I had to give you your flowers, man, because it was just like at the most crucial time. I'm gonna tell you when when I got that denial letter and and, and a few other things was happening. I said, giving up was never part of my mind. Giving up was never part of my vocabulary. And during that three weeks, for the first time in my media life, I was like, shit, well, maybe it's time to hang it up. Maybe it, it really is time to call, you know, call the horses in and you know, do something else. Because like you said, a lot of times you look at this picture of success of where you want to be, but life it puts you exactly where you wanted to be. And and like I said, that call, that text, ladies and gentlemen, came right on time. Tim was like, yo, we still good? And that simple text gave me the unks to say, man, let's keep going. You know what I'm saying? That small text was like, hey, we still doing the pod? He didn't say anything else, ladies and gentlemen, but hey, we still doing the pod? And I, it was a sign for me like, yeah, this is what I'm still supposed to be doing. Yeah, because if as long as one person needed it, we were doing the right work. You know, what people yeah. would call the Lord's work. Yeah. That is Christianity to me. You know what I mean? It's doing the Lord's work. It's not about what people think you are. It's not about what you read. It's about what you practice. You yeah. feel me? That's why spirituality became so important to me, because I was already practicing it before I even knew what I was doing, just protecting myself. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So now when you get stronger, you got to stop protecting yourself. You got to start applying yourself. You can't be defensive. You got to get on the offense. You got to be direct. You know what I mean? You got to be bold enough to ask the universe for some shit. And you got to be brave enough to go get it. You mm -hmm. dig? And we're shown that every single day we got that opportunity. But we limit ourselves. We say, well, in the next 10 years, I'm gonna, like, you don't know what's going to happen in the next 10 years. What you going to do today? <laughs> Focus on that. Because that 10 years is still made up of individual days. You still got to get to the 10. So start here. You know what I mean? But we want to be done. We want to be finished. I'm trying to be complete. And to me, completion is you took all the necessary steps to be done. Being finished is you got tired. You didn't want to do it no more. It got too hard. You know, the mountain got too high to climb. People were telling you no. Things like that. We need that shit. It reminds us. We ain't perfect. We ain't just going to get our way. We got to actually do something special. We got to stand out. Right. You feel me? So that excites me in life because now I got something to do tomorrow. You know what I mean? Now I got something to do next week. At yeah. times where I was younger, when it's so easy to just give up on life, like, man, fuck all this shit. When you get older, you have to keep giving yourself reasons to wake up. Man. You know what I mean? So to me, that's why I live intentionally. That's why I want good people around me. It you know, sometimes when you have a question in life and the answer comes much later, yeah, you don't realize that you answered the question for me. And when it came to the grand, 
I said, this has to work. This has to work. And I was so constricted in my mind, like, I need this. This has to work. And like you said last hour, he was like, that's what it, you know, it doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you make sure, when, when you have the mindset that I'm going to go with this flow and I'm going to navigate through whatever obstacles, it pans out a lot better than this has to work. Because yeah. whatever happens is you're really constricting the universe at that point. Yeah. And it's a half truth. You know what I mean? This is like people are, we're just projections of how we think and feel what we've experienced. It's a half truth. When we say little quips like that, that's not even the full length of what we're trying to say. That's the, this has to work, dot, dot, dot. And to me, it's like, nah, say the rest. Say say what you really mean. And what we really mean is this has to work or I don't know what else I'm going to do. You dig? And that mindset, it, it, I hope whatever you're involved in as a person, everyone in general doesn't work for you. The best thing, that's the best thing that can happen. The worst thing that can happen is it works that way and you got that fool's gold and now you think things work this way. And they don't. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? They don't. Like, because we should never lead what we're trying to do with, with words like that. It already shows where our mindset is. We're just projecting how we feel. You dig? And sometimes words slip out because that's how we really feel. We've just been trying to hold on to it too long. And that motherfucker slipped through the cracks. You dig? So I start everything accepting this might not work out. And am I fine with that? Because mm -hmm. if this is going to destroy me, I'm not even going to do it. If there's, it's a gamble that I, this could fail and it's going to destroy me, I won't do it. But if I'm fine with this not working out, I'm going to try it out. If right. I'm fine, am I fine with this taking 20 years to get off the ground? If it's no, because this is going to be a dead industry in 20 years, I'm out. <laughs> if it's something that just will be taken off in the 20 years, I'm cool with that. I can yeah. do that. Let me put a dollar a day towards it. You dig what I'm saying? So we show ourselves how we feel about what we're going to do. Mm. That to me is what created the term rhetorical question. Like we already be knowing the answer, you dig? But the answer's scary. The answer's hard. Yeah. The answer means now I got to go address this other shit if I acknowledge this answer. You feel yeah. me? That's healing. That's the healing journey. It's either saying you're willing to do whatever it takes to get it so you're going to or saying, I'm not willing to do whatever it takes, so let me go put my time and energy somewhere else, somewhere that it, it would be better invested. You mm. dig? This was maybe something I did. I retired. This was as much time as I was supposed to do it. I did that. Kudos. Now what next? You know right. what I mean? You dig? So we. I think we should look at everything like that. Relationships, conversations we have with our kids, expectations we have for ourselves, for our success, who we want our friends to be. You dig what I'm saying? We should always be willing to accept this may not go the way I want to. But yeah. I really care about this enough. I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. We have to willing to accept, yo, this going to be a hard conversation with them. They might not take this too well. But yeah. I'm going to do it anyway. You know what I mean? You know what? I, I do got to get up in the morning. I'm a little tired. You know, maybe I should get some sleep. But I did say I was going out. So, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm yeah. going to just get up early. And then we remember where we've been. That's why experience is so important. On those hard nights when I was writing the book and I wanted to go to bed and I'm telling myself I need this sleep in the morning, I remember 10 years ago where I didn't sleep for a month straight trying to get my business off the ground. So yeah. I don't need sleep. I want to sleep. I've shown myself that. What I need to do is what I told myself I was going to do. I need to stay up and write. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? But it's going to be constant distraction. So now, like the old heads was over me when I was younger. Oh, you ain't doing that right. You ain't. Now it's my own thoughts. But I'm trained for this. I'm prepared for this. I'm not worried about that. I've already mastered that. Yeah. You dig? That was my purpose for where I was as a kid. It wasn't to become Justin Bieber. It wasn't to go to the NBA. It was so I could equip myself with things I would need at 34. Right. My purpose at 34 is to equip myself with things I'm going to need at 40. My purpose at 40 is to quit myself with things I'm going to need at 60. Mm -hmm. And it's constantly being aware of what I need and who I want to be. To me, that's happiness. It's that yeah. awareness. It's not the smile. It's not money in your account. I swear to God, people don't believe me when I say this. I'm better when I have less money. I don't <laughs> always feel good having a bunch of money. Because yeah. I have that anxiety of a motherfucker about to ask me for some money or something. 
going to now think to break down because it think I got some money to fix it. <laughs> you dig? <laughs> like, I hate having a bunch of money. <laughs> I love being broke. I loved when I didn't have no money. I love when I was on the grind, when I was really looking at my accounts negative. I'm like, all right, I got to go out there and get it. You know yeah. what I mean? And then feeling good at the end of the day, knowing you left it all out there. You ain't take nothing home with you. You dig? Like, sometimes I get complacent when I got opportunities and money. I get complacent when people are telling me, yo, your shit's good. You know what I mean? I worked harder when I was a kid. And they told me I wasn't shit and wasn't going to be shit. I worked hard. <laughs> well, what you have to do is a lot of times, and, and, and thank you, when you get back to where you are, remember the lessons because we're talking about falling off. So the cycle yeah. of falling off is you were here, you dipped, and then you got back on. So when you get back up and, and in conclusion is remember the lessons because abundance can make you lazy. Yeah. But the mindset of, well, this is what it took for the fall because a lot of times the fall is you don't keep your eye on the ball or basically the things that the hunger left. So therefore you wasn't working as hard or you, you, you basically didn't plan out the contingency for this person doing this or that person doing that. So you put your feet up in some way, shape or form. Let's keep it real. You put your feet up and, uh, or sometimes, I mean, it, it, it very rarely is it an act of nature. I mean, we have to provide space for that, but a lot of times, it is you put your feet up and got comfortable and it felt it failed. This is why I live by that code, man. I keep the devil out of my house because it's like I'm always on guard. Like, OK, on my way back up, you know, I'm not going to accept no foolishness because, you know, my fall was a hard fall. You know what I'm saying? And just like that, when he got shot nine times, he said, I'm the way I am because the motherfucker's not going to shoot me again. That them not exactly. painful as hell because Fifty Cent is not operating from a place of I'm scared. He said I'm determined that shit is not going to happen to me again, and that's exactly how I feel about a fall again. Once I'm up, Tim, I'm up. You know what I'm saying? Because that fall for me was so painful because. I did allow my ego to get the best of me when I was on Power 107.5. I did allow my ego to get the best of me when I was on tour with Yavis Ellis. I did allow my ego to get the best of me when I was up a quarter million dollars. I allowed my ego to determine how I treated people and, and my work ethic. Because when you up to a quarter million dollars, you feel that that money is never going to run out. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. And that ain't no money, you know what I'm saying? But to a person who never had that kind of money, who came from the short north, that was everything to me, you yeah. know? So therefore, that fall from grace, and it's been a 10-year fall. People don't realize this has been a 10-year fall from grace and my, my you know, you know, journey to, to make it back to at least that status in life. I'm determined. I'm not going back in that other direction again once I get to where I'm going. Yeah. And th that automatically starts to change your mindset. You know what I mean? Because to me, that ride on that horse is different for people. It's different for the people we've been naming that who the world would consider them successful is because they lost the fear of falling. Like they're not afraid no more to fall off the horse. You dig? And that comes through being great at what you do. And then there's two lanes of that. You could be so good at riding the horse because you're afraid of falling off. You mm -hmm. dig? Or you can be great at riding a horse because you learned how not to fall off. Right. And those is two different mindsets, two different people. To the outside eye, it looks the same. But internally, there are two different people that handle life differently. So that's the point. You get good at what you're doing to become better at everything you do, not mm -hmm. to just be good at what you're doing. You right. know what I'm saying? So it is easier when you have that adversity. Um <laughs> like there's comments even now this is the point this is why i love the show this is why i love you know these conversations but you know it's people agreeing people dropping saying we're dropping gems and facts you know <laughs> and then there comes the satire you know someone commented in that case you're trash at this podcast and shit <laughs> and that's the beauty of what we do like you gotta go into what you're doing expecting the unexpected you know right. what I mean? Because we all have had to double back. We all have had that moment. I've done it hella with this podcast. 
I yeah. done had a, a cover art or an episode. I'm like, nah, I ain't gonna put that out. People ain't gonna fuck with that. I'm already taking myself out the game in my head before I've even tried. Right. They could have loved it, but I convinced myself that they weren't gonna like it. So now I'm backtracking on what I know to do, what I've been showing myself to continuously do. That's a part of the journey. We need that. You dig? Mm -hmm. So there should be no fear of falling, fear of failure, fear they won't like it. Just put your art out there. Just put your shit out there. Because they might not like it today and like it in two years. Well, right. who cares? They might not, you know what I mean? They might love it today and not like it in two years. That's good. To me, that means your mind's changing. It's I don't need you to agree with me. I need you to be challenging your thoughts. I don't need you to be so certain about what you think you know and feel. Challenge that shit, you dig? Challenge me. It's going to make me better. You feel what I'm saying? So now where iron sharpens iron, that's the best we can do for people. Like, we cannot make them happy. We can't love them into a better life. I can't give you money and make your problems go away. I can just show you a better way. And, and your choices, you don't have to set, take that way. And you don't got to get it today. You dig what I'm saying? But the more you start to acknowledge maybe other people can help me, more people will be able to help you. The more you isolate yourself and nobody can't tell me nothing, won't nobody mm -hmm. be able to help you. Right, right. Absolutely, man. I man, I'm I'm telling you, we could we could go on and on. I, I got a, a, a appointment to get to, but I will say this. Um in my 20 years, I've I've had some great mentors. Shout out to Paul Strong, Von Roy G, Sean Anthony, um, a lot of people which helped me, the articulation, you know, that that you now Man, I, I remember, you know, just starting out, I would have to write out everything that I wanted to say in front of anybody because I was just that nervous. And now just to see me flow, uh, man, it's, it's just, I, I see my growth, man. And that's why I said I can't get out the game right now because, I mean, this part of the journey, like you said, just away from radio now and podcasting, it's a whole new journey for me, man. And I appreciate people like yourself for just not letting me give up on, on my media dream. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, brother, because I do those things in life under the impression, not hoping or expecting, but under the impression this person could do this for me one day. And to mm -hmm. me, it's worth it. That's that's compensation enough. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. that may be doing something for my kids in two years. That may never even get to me, but it still got to me, you dig? So when we choose to be good, good things happen. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's all I'm going to leave them with. And most importantly, like, what is it? You fall down nine, get up ten. I still don't understand those numbers. But whatever they was trying to say is what I'm yeah. trying to say. Always make sure you get back up on that horse. That's that's your goal. That's the only thing that should be important. I don't care if you fell down a thousand times. The goal is make sure you find a reason to get back up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. See, <laughs> She must have she must have read her brother's comment. <laughs> <laughs> like, let me get some context behind this. <laughs> Trinae, Trinae said he gonna cry in the car. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me say something positive before he cry in the car. <laughs> My whole family ain't like this. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> Making us look bad. Yo. <laughs> Yeah, man, this is enough for me. Like, we can come together and have fun and laugh and talk real shit. Like, I could I could do this every day. Yeah, man, I, I really appreciate you, bro, man. Yes, I mean, sir. we back now. So we back on a weekly basis. We back on track, everybody. So we back every Thursday. So tune back in to us, Reflection Thursdays. Again, um, we're going to get some stuff together for the month of July and uh, really try to uh, get this studio together so we can keep things going, okay? Um, other than that, tonight I will be at Double Take with my man Tavon, uh, who we are growing by leaps and bounds. We love um, what we're doing on Wednesday nights. Shout out to my baby, who was the honoree last night uh, for Women Crush Wednesdays. Uh, just keep supporting that. Uh, Tim, tell them about your books before we get out of here. Yeah, uh, search me, Amazon, Google, Good Life underscore Rush. You can see all the books I got out now. Um, it's been an amazing journey. Appreciate everybody that's copped the book and that's been supporting. Um, we got sessions coming back now on Friday nights at 9. So make sure y'all tap into that, the event love. Um, that's it, man. I'm excited to be back. 
Absolutely, man. Until next time, have a great weekend, everybody. This is Reflection Thursdays. We out. Peace.